Like, what is your favorite um, horror movie? Oh, that's hard. I hate this question because I like different movies for completely different reasons. But yeah. I would say, I would say probably, <clears throat> you know, the, the only core horror movies must be Friday the Thirteenth because that was the thing that that really got me into writing and and what I like. I I came I came to Hollywood wanting to write the next Friday the 13th movie. Like that's oh, right, what yeah. I to do. And I even started to, I had this whole thing that was by a nuclear power plant. I basically combined elements of Terminator with, with Friday yeah. the 13th. <laughs> and, um, and then that turned into my, 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 my first book that doesn't even exist anymore. And then, and I was led to, to Nightmare, which I also love for different reasons. And this is why I, you you should read uh, a Slash of the Titans and see what my story is for that. Yeah, I, I really want to read it. The way I try to combine the two is based on how different the characters are, which I don't think they resolved in the they, properly in the in the movie they made. Um, and so, of course, that and, and then now I'm back on a uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre kick. Oh, because, right. Yeah. I mean, have you have you seen the first one? Yeah, I've seen only the first one and the second one. Yeah, I, I, gotta say, watching I the prefer second the second one, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just so funny, you know? Well, that's the thing is it's a completely different movie. Yeah. And, like to me, like the first one is almost like watching a documentary of people just getting yeah. killed. Um. And I don't mean that even in a bad way. It's not even quite, um, you know, like a snuff film. It's just, it's so raw. Uh, whereas the second movie is quite clearly an 80s Hollywood film. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, it looks, it even has the same lighting as Return of the Living Dead and like half of the movies that were made in horror at that time. Plus, and what this was a very big part of my Friday the 13th book, as the 80s went by, there was a lot of censorship in the, in the United States. There was a lot of increasing censorship on violence in films. And so if you look at the, the my Friday the 13th book was actually a look at how the movies changed the more conservative from an entertainment standpoint the United States got. So that by, you know, in one, you have a very slow scene of Kevin Bacon getting an arrow through his neck. Yeah. And by... By eight, Jason killing somebody is him raising his, his machete, cut to someone going, ah, and then and zooming in on the face or something what? stupid. And yeah. Then, like zooming in on the face or something stupid right. like that. And then cut to a wall being splashed with blood. Yeah. Like he didn't make the connection because by then, the, the ratings board was really harsh on violence in, in film. So you can see what all of what the 80s did to horror films if you just look at all eight Friday the 13th movies in a row. And then if you look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre, same thing. They, they, they cut, there's blood, but not quite the same violent, like, raw gore, and it's super funny. It's all play for laughs. Yeah. And that's because it was the 80s. Yeah, it was all about having fun, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and also they, they couldn't do explicit violence like, like the 70s. A lot of this was the backlash from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, to some extent. A lot of the early Wes Craven, uh, Sean Cunningham movies like Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes. I mean, basically it was to all torture porn, which yeah. Eli Roth brought back. Thank you, Eli Roth. Um, and so a lot of what happened in the 80s was actually a backlash to what happened all those movies in the 70s yeah and like friday the 13th part seven that's like the worst case of uh uh <laughs> explicit scenes getting cut i mean it even has the best like um weapon uh jason ever used like the long uh like an old long thing i don't know really exactly what it is but it's like uh a thing that spins around with blades oh, in it. oh it was a it was a it was a weeder it was yeah. like a yeah 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 it was it was a basically a big blade on, on the end of a long stick <laughs> i think actually it was either for no i think it was for um pruning trees like cutting cutting yeah, branches like that 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I was like. When I watched that scene for first, I was oh shit, it's gonna be so awesome, you know. <laughs> and then everything was just cut down, and it's such a shame. Yeah, and 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 that and that you know the concept alone, you know, Jason versus Carrie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's sort of like at that point they they've got a bunch of concepts in a in a hat. Yeah, and then Jason versus. Carrie, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, it could have been Bugs Bunny, you know. That was probably in the hat too. Jason visits that cemetery or yeah, something like that. that you know? Yeah, they and, and they were struggling for for ideas, uh, and part of it was because of the violence, uh, the backlash against violence. So you put a fantasy element like a telekinetic uh, girl in there. And then that takes it, that makes it much more fantasy violence and not realistic violence. And they can no. do action at least. Yeah. Like the ending of part seven was like absolutely ridiculous. It was like, <laughs> like the father coming out of the water. <laughs> I, I don't know who, who thought that was a good idea or something or <laughs> if that would be cool. Like if the makeup effects were good and he actually looked like a zombie or like a second Jason, that would have made for a... A very cool part eight, like uh, Jason versus like Jason yeah, two point oh or something, but it, <laughs> it's like just a little bit of dirt on his face. It, yeah, that was a weird ending. I, I, I again, another sign that like, cause I don't, cause the dad wasn't even there. Like, no. Like, <laughs> so like you, 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 like you just take that and you try to break it down. And you're like, well, wait a minute, this is like a whole other movie. Yeah, <laughs> this is what's going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, really, they, they've been at, they, uh, got to the 10th movie, and then he goes into space, you know? I mean, really, what else did you expect? Like, some people really hate Jason X, but what else did you expect? Did you just want Jason to go to Camp Crystal Lake again and again kill people, right. you know? And that was actually the point of the brainstorm when we came up with the ideas that ultimately became Jason X was exactly that. It was just like, who cares if he goes back to Crystal Lake? Yeah. Like, actually, my idea in the future was that that Crystal Lake had become like a Fiji water. It had become a water um, brand. And that if you had... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to sound really, really stupid. So okay. it feels really stupid. But my idea at the time was that, so you had now you had bottled Crystal Lake water all over the United States, if not the world. And that if you accidentally dropped and broke a bottle of Crystal Lake water, Jason could pop up and kill you. <laughs> okay. I, I like that idea until the part where Jason pops up. But, like I said, Super stupid. Although, and I can show it to you if you want, very strange, and I made all that up. When I moved into the place I'm living in right now, I opened, you know, it was all empty. I opened a cupboard and there were two bottles of water just sitting in one cupboard from whoever before. They were both bottles of Crystal Lake water. Oh. <laughs> like I didn't even know that existed. It was, it's really creepy. Yeah, don't drop it because maybe Jason pops up. Yeah, yeah. So no, they're they're in the back of the cupboard now, so they don't fall down and break. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and um, like, did you read any of the Jason X spinoff books? Like these two? Um, not the Jason. No, I'd never read the Jason X books. The only Jason Friday the Thirteenth novelization I wrote, I read, was that that series where. They kept finding his mask, and if you put on his mask... Oh, right. Yeah, um, that's like more of a junior uh, book. Yeah, like yeah. Mother's Day in the Carnival and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only books I ever read. Um, I just never got a chance to to read those. I think I was, at the time... I also lived in Scotland shortly thereafter, so I, I was busy uh, and, and away from everything. But I think for a while I was just being cranky over the fact that they were marketing those books with with uh evil gets an upgrade <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like fine i'm not gonna read your book it's my book <laughs> yeah it's like that's one of the downsides uh in my opinion for these books like i expected you know if i would have made these books <laughs> i would have just said uh evil gets an upgrade on like the novelization you know and the rest would have had like other uh 
uh, taglines because the Friday the 13th novels, um, also by Black Flame, they have like the tagline, uh, welcome to Camp Crystal Lake, uh, mm -hmm. stay forever, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's a cool tagline, but like all of them have the same tagline. It's like, could you have come up with a better uh, tagline for each well, one? <laughs> That's just one of those things where where they if they have a line a related line of books, that's how you know they're all part of the series. Yeah, right. You know that's 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 just that. I know what you mean though. Definitely. So I'm I, now that now that now that we know now that I know what your your Dr Pepper story is, uh, <laughs> I think I'm I'm good with questions for now myself. You got anything else for me? No, not really. Okay, I may have book recommendations for you though. Okay. Book and movie recommendations. Oh, that's awesome. I'll uh, I'll definitely hear from that in the uh, in the chat then. And yes. I, I don't, and I'd like to see the uh, Camp Crystal Lake uh, water bottles. <laughs> Actually, hold on one sec. If you don't. Mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. So uh, that's insane. It's it's the of all the things to be in an apartment that was otherwise empty. These. <laughs> yeah, it would be so. I like when you when you told me like about the old concept of water bottles. Uh -huh. That's actually a great idea, and I just can see how how the uh, bottles would look like with trees and stuff, and like some cabins and stuff, like the logo. Uh, mm -hmm. how would, uh, I I can just visualize uh, the whole concept. <laughs> Yeah. Outside of the Jason showing up. Because you know, that <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily pop up immediately like a genie. It just, if the water gets on the ground, it gives him his energy and anchor point to come out of and All right, yeah. haunt. So it wasn't <laughs> quite <laughs> as bad as that. You're but just wasting that. my lake water. That's what Jason thinks. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's actually his entire motivation. He's over his mother. It's really wasting the lake water. Yeah. He, he's very eco-friendly these days. Yeah, I mean, in Jason X, he just wakes up suddenly because uh, the two teenagers are having sex. So really, uh, like, <laughs> it has gotten that stupid. So like, uh, um, the water bottle ID wasn't wasn't even that bad, honestly. We'll see. I I, I for all that it is, I will defend uh, 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 Jason X just because it's. You know, it was just like, okay, fine. Let's just at least have some fun with this. Yeah. I mean, even like, I I just finished today this book, uh, Plan of the Beast. And <laughs> I mean, what's that? This is in really good condition, it looks like. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, the spine is even undamaged. Wow. It's it's yeah. insane. Nice. But uh, this one as well, by the way, it's, it's absolutely insane. Like, yeah. Uh, Someone just bought it. Was like, oh no, I'm not gonna read this. this is too bad. <laughs> no, but uh, it's really funny because in this book, um, the author Nancy Kilpatrick mentions Jason not as just like Uber Jason or anything, but she calls him Jason X. <laughs> so whenever, whenever Jason pops up, she's like, and then Jason X stood there in the door, you know. <laughs> it's like what? Like <laughs> it's the Ooh, title. I didn't know that. Movie, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, something really funny. Uh, she always mentions uh, Jason's ice blue eyes, but it, even on the cover, you can he's tell that he has blue eyes. His red eyes. Eye. His his eyes and as Jason as that Jason is all have always been red. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So yeah, it's an, it's a pretty interesting read uh, in that regard. And for some reason, like um, when you read the novelization for Friday the Thirteenth and all those movies. Um, they never really talk about Jason's eyes or anything, but for some reason, in this particular book, they just keep mentioning his eyes. Well, which is weird because, okay, so this is maybe the first time his eyes have been significant in, in that they're bloodshot like yeah. that. But then to then call them by the wrong color when that's <laughs> so significant is kind of odd. Yeah, I mean it's 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 weird, and even 
it, it, the funniest part to me is that it's like really um, obvious, like on the cover, you can clearly see that it's red eyes. I mean, it's a close up from his face, you know, mm -hmm. and so <laughs> it's really weird. Right. Well, and, you know, so they even if she had not never seen that, which is entirely likely, like yeah. um, you would still have watched the movie. And, um, you know, as part of your research to to, you know, get a foundation for the character. And so it's pretty obvious in the movie. Yeah. And like, uh, because this is like a sequel to the movie itself. Right. There's actually this actually like book three. So mm -hmm. you first have the novelization, then part two, the experiment, um, mm -hmm. which is like exactly like after Jason X. Mm -hmm. And then you have this book. So it all, all ties in, you know, and if you've seen the movie, you know that he has red eyes, not eyes right. blue eyes. Right, right, right. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anything else, sir? No. Okay. Well, we should definitely. Else? No. Okay. Well, we should definitely keep talking anyway. Uh, yeah. True. But uh, but this was a lot of fun. Yeah, Thank it you. was. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for being on the channel. Oh wow! I'd be interested to see how this how this cuts up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, yeah, for everyone watching this, this has been the interview with um, David Bergantino, the writer and uh, of the tagline, Evil Gets an Upgrade and <laughs> West Craven's New Nightmare. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm going to keep giving you credit for it. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, this has been the interview. Do you have anything else to say to uh, the viewers? Stay scary. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> See ya. All right. Bye. Ah!